Welcome to another episode of Global Land. This episode is going to be focused on population growth, or what's happening in the world in terms of the population, and overall how does this affect our society, our environment, and globalization as well. As you listen, be sure to watch and take notes. Please use the rewind button if necessary, or pause it as well. Please do not skip ahead, and also take notes on what I am saying as well. I apologize if you hear any Spanish music in the background. The janitor is playing Spanish music. I've been dancing up a storm. Let's begin. So, population growth. First, we want to go back to the beginning. In the 1700s, we've had families had many, many, many kids. The reason why they had so many kids is because very few of them would survive. So it was really hard for the population to actually grow because we didn't know who was going to survive and who was not going to survive. Unfortunately, miscarriages were common, infants and toddlers would die at a young age, diseases were spread easily. So incomes are a time period which we know, which is the Industrial Revolution, when we start to get machines and factories have the center of the work location and people start to live in these urban centers. Industrial revolution leads to a population growth. Why? It's because we have new ways of living. We have better food. We have better food supplies as well. With the uh, food supplies and the food, we're talking about the grain revolution. We have the enclosure movement. So we have a food supply that can hold a lot of people. We have medicine that can help cure different diseases. We have better working and living conditions so people don't get sick and die. There's improvement and it's harder for diseases to spread. Okay? Because of the Industrial Revolution, we have a growing population. So all of a sudden, these families are having six, seven, eight, nine kids. Keep having six, seven, eight, nine kids because the pot, because that's, I guess, their norm, you can say. And because of that, we have a population growth. Population increases. Okay? We now have a famous philosopher that comes around. He's actually an economist, Thomas Malthus. Thomas Malthus writes a book and he predicts that there's not going to be enough food and supplies and resources to serve a growing population. He thinks that eventually there'll be way too many people in the world and there's not going to be enough food for them. It's kind of like the Hunger Games. So he said eventually this is going to cause a problem and only the, uh, those fit for survival will be able to survive. So if you look at this chart, you can actually see this is population growth throughout history. If we start from the year 1000, overall the population growth is incredibly low until you get to the Industrial Revolution. From the 1800s to 1900s, you see a big spike, and the 1900s on, we see a huge spike. Industrial Revolution has a huge effect on the increase of population in the world. So, what does this mean? Today we are recovering from a population growth, which means that people don't need to have as many children anymore, and people are just starting to realize that they don't need to have multiple kids. And now today we see people usually have one to two, three kids on average. Okay? So even though there are billions of people in the world, overall the population growth rate has decreased. Hold up, y'all. I'm going to pull a little Mr. Campbell and Miss G as I do some math for a second. I'm going to go back to this graph. When we say population rate, rate is another word for slope, y over x. So the population rate over here is very high. We have a very high slope. It's very intense. But over here, if we were to continue this, actually, this is just a prediction. But for it to continue the population growth rate, it's going to be not that big. Population growth rate is not big here. The rate growth is here, but now the population growth rate is starting to level off because people are having less kids. So it's all about the Y over the X, and we're seeing the change over time. It's basically seeing that during the Industrial Revolution, the population increased, the rate of population increased, but now people don't need to have as many kids, so the rate evens out. Okay? Ask Ms. G for more info. Going on, the biggest thing that you need to know is how the population affects the environment. Okay? First, humans need more room to live. So this leads to cutting down forests so they have more space to live. This is called deforestation. Deforestation is cutting down forests for living space. We also have desertification. 
spreading of deserts. Deserts are growing each year. The Sahara Desert, for example, in Africa keeps growing and it's less fertile soil to grow crops for people. So we're just the population increasing is putting more demands on the environment, which is resulting in destruction of forests and destruction of deserts. Yes, it sounds a lot like living environment. We also have, because we have more humans, we have less food and water available for everyone. It's not enough for it's Hunger Games style, but there is less, and there's some areas of the world, especially in African country, where we African countries where we have less food and water available. The word for this is scarcity. Scarcity means we have a short supply or a little supply of something. So there's little water or little clean usable water in a lot of places in the world, which is a problem. There's little food in the world, not enough for the growing population, which is a problem. And you can imagine the globalization efforts across the world that are trying to combat these problems. Finally, the, the pollution is a big thing. With more humans, we have more pollution. Especially in the Industrial Revolution with factories and machines, we have more pollution and it affects the environment with climate change. Deforestation is connected to climate change, change as well. Cutting down trees, more CO2, carbon dioxide in the air. All these are together. The whole point is humans are growing at an alarming rate and it's affecting the population in history as affecting the environment in history. I'll say that again. The humans have been growing at an alarming rate through the 18 and 1900s and that has drastically affected our environment. Going on, you can see this is a quick picture of deforestation and you can even see in the background um, some of the greenhouse gases as well. We're wrecking habitats for plant animals to create more living space for humans. And this is a picture of climate change. The idea of climate change or the greenhouse effect is the idea is that the sun's rays are warming the earth and then we have gases such as carbon dioxide that are trapping the sun's rays in the earth. So carbon dioxide from pollution from cars and factories, carbon dioxide from deforestation, cutting down trees, there's more carbon dioxide in the air and it traps, the carbon dioxide traps the sun's rays into its atmosphere. So over here, it's really hard for the sun's rays to leave the atmosphere, so it goes back down. Increase in carbon dioxide leads to an increase in the sun rays, and we have a heating of the earth, which is called climate change. The polar ice caps are melting as you hear, sea levels are rising. You might see changes in the weather as well sometimes in different areas of the world. All this is climate change and results in, I'm sorry, it's because of the population growth and the pollution from the Industrial Revolution as a result of it. So our population has grown a lot in the past years, yes, it is slowing down, but we still have to take precautions around our environment to ensure that we are leaving a world behind so when we're old, we can say, oh, look, there's still a world around us and there's still a world around for our children. Yes, I just got a little philosoph philosoph philosophical there. Oof, brain fart right there. But anyway, Take care of your environment. Please don't litter, and please don't litter in my classroom. I can't tell you how much garbage I find on the floor. This is the end of the Cornell Notes. Hope you enjoyed.